Uh, these things are a little strange. They're fairly straightforward, but if you're trying to find a negative solution, it's a little counterintuitive. And I just want to spend a little bit of time on that. Um, let's just take a look at, uh, let's say, the, and y'all, the, the squiggly little braces here mean fractional piece. And so I'm going to write uh, fractional piece. Uh, we'll, we'll say minus 2.8. Now, when I first looked at this a while back, um, I thought, okay, the fractional piece is just the, the uh, decimal part. And so I would have thought the answer would be minus 0.8. All right. But uh, for, I guess, technical reasons, the fractional part is always, uh, by convention, positive. And so this is actually, believe it or not, equal to plus 0.2. Okay, plus 0.2 there. That, that's weird because if this was plus 2.8, the fractional part would be 0.8. But again, the fractional part of minus 2.8 is taken to be 0.2. Now, it turns out this little definition down here kind of meets the task for all integers. In, in, in this particular case, you could see that uh, we would be talking about the fractional part of minus 2.8. Okay, y'all, the fractional part of minus 2.8. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this zoom writing utensil. But uh, it would be uh, in this interval. It'd be contained. I mean, for x contained in this interval, uh, and that really should read for x contained in this interval, it would be. The interval would be minus three to minus two, right? And y'all, again, this is for x, for uh, x, a member, right? So this x is definitely contained in this interval, right? But what you do is uh, this becomes equal to x minus this negative three that you see right here, the i. And so this would be equal to uh, uh, x is 2.8. So we would have minus 2.8, okay, plus three. Now I know that seems very strange, but I guess it's very important for the fractional piece to always be positive in a lot of other contexts. I'm not 100% certain about that, but that is equal to 0.2, okay, 0.2. Okay, y'all, again, pretty pretty strange, isn't it? It's kind of hard to get used to that, but one way, that, one way to make sense out of it is if you just remember what the graph of the fractional piece looks like, it looks, um, It looks something like this. It's kind of a sawtooth shape like that. And so this, this, this definition of it extends all the way, you know, like all the way across, even on the negative side. Okay, so uh, it would look like, uh, well, sorry. It looked like that, you know, and, but anyway, that explains more or less why uh, negative values have positive fractional parts, I hope. I hope that helps at least. So anyway, uh, this is gonna come in handy actually solving this particular equation. So let's, um, let's move down and take a look. Now, so I, I just rewrote, here, here's the original equation. We're trying to solve this equation for negative solutions. And uh, we're going to use this definition right here. Now, a way to get started here is to actually just solve uh, this equation, x squared plus 3x minus 11. So the negative solution, we are looking for negative solutions. The negative solution turns out to be this value right here, right around minus 5.14. Okay, you can think of the radical form. I just wrote down a decimal approximation to the nearest 100. Okay, and the reason why it's okay to do this is because the fractional piece is always within one of the actual value of x anyway, right? So this is going to give us a good starting point. So notice that this is contained, this number is contained 
uh, let me get the marker working here again. This number would be contained in the interval uh, minus six, comma minus five, right? And y'all, this does represent the x-intercept, the negative x-intercept of this graph, which isn't gonna be too far away from the action here as far as what the fractional piece is doing. Okay, but that means that uh, your i is going to be negative six, so this x minus i will be x plus six. If that helps. I hope hopefully this makes the rest of the stuff I did come a little clearer. And so what we do, we know that this is literally equal to this in this interval, and we are in uh, operating in this interval right here. So that's why we set uh, right here. In this interval, that linear piece is actually equal to the fractional part, right? Isn't that cool? So that's why we went to all that trouble earlier. Uh, in this interval, minus six to minus five, which is where this zero lies, okay, the fractional piece is actually equal to x plus six, okay, actually equal to x plus six. And the rest of this is straightforward. You just uh, bring it to the other side, solve the quadratic. I didn't show all the details of solving the quadratic, but we got this number approximately right around here, okay? Now, when you evaluate the original function, in other words, when you evaluate this function at this value, you get a value that's right around uh, 0.76. But notice that is, per our earlier demonstration, the fractional piece of minus, uh, minus 5.24. The, frac the fractional piece of minus 5.24, okay, is equal to uh, six uh, minus 5.24, right? Okay, 6.524, uh, six minus 5.24, is this value right here, right? So see, it's kind of crazy. I would never figure this out on my own without doing it like this. We actually get a number and it, the actual equation itself that's equal to the fractional part of that number evaluates uh, to the fractional part. Okay, again, this, this right here is equal to uh, 0.76, right? The value you see right there. Okay, guys, I hope that wasn't too confusing. I, I think it's the only way to do it really analytically. I don't know a way to do it just by guessing. Okay, thanks.